Many clients request a more natural solution to their allergies because they want to avoid all the side effects from their antihistamine drugs. Antihistamines are a family of drugs used to treat allergies. They do not get rid of your allergy. They just help with the symptoms. As far as the side effects of antihistamines, people can generally put up with the sleepiness or the dry mouth issues caused by antihistamines. But reports of antihistamines damaging the user's memory and contributing to dementia, well, that stopped a lot of people from using them. People would rather suffer with their allergies. So why would allergy medication affect the brain in the first place? The problem is that all antihistamines share an unwanted bundle of side effects because they also have something called an anticholinergic effect. Anticholinergic meaning they block the activity of an important neurotransmitter in the brain and in the body known as acetylcholine. It transmits messages to your nerves. In other words, besides their antihistaminic activity for treating allergies, when they unintentionally but always inhibit acetylcholine, it affects both your brain and your body with many, many side effects. Acetylcholine in the brain is required for repairing cells in your gray matter. That's where memory takes place. It's also needed to solve problems, acetylcholine. It's needed for learning. It's needed for remembering anything. So it is the memory neurotransmitter. So you do not want to block acetylcholine's actions for your memory over an entire allergy season. Not a good idea. Now, besides the anticholinergic activity in the brain, it also affects your body. It can lead to constipation, urinary retention, increased heart rate, and many other side effects, some of which are pretty troubling. So what do you do? You suffer with the runny nose, the dizziness, and sore throat seen in allergies? No, you don't have to. There are herbs and nutrients that can help, and they are very effective when combined properly. And guess what? They're pretty, pretty darn safe. And that's shown in human clinical studies. So welcome to our Springtime Allergies and Natural Remedies podcast, the show that discusses alternatives to antihistamines and what you can expect from these natural solutions. Hi, my name is Jerry Hickey. I'm a nutritional pharmacist over here at Invite Health. I'm also the scientific director, and I'd like to talk to you today about the herbs and the nutrients that can help with your allergies and how much can you really expect from them. Let's start off by talking about rosemary. Uh, you have to be familiar with rosemary. It's one of those um, herbs in a Provence, uh, the herbs of Provence mix in your spice rack. Rosemary has a very strong flavor. We use it all the time when we cook, my wife and I. Rosemary contains rosmarinic acid, which has potent anti-inflammatory activity and which has shown ability to reduce the chemicals released by your immune system that will irritate your nose and your throat and your respiratory tract during an allergic reaction. These chemicals re released by the immune system would include interleukin-13 that causes a, a lot of the damage that leads to the symptoms of allergies. So, for instance, uh, rosemary may help reduce the reaction to dust mites and pollens. In fact, you may want to ask before we go any further into detail about the herbs and nutrients for allergies, why would you suffer with specific symptoms when you have an allergic reaction? Well, when you react to something in an allergy, you're reacting to the proteins and whatever that might be, whether it's uh, the dog dander or the cat or pollens or certain foods, you're reacting to the proteins. And the cells that react to the proteins exist largely in your mucous tissues, so by your tear ducts and in your nose and in your mouth and throat, and down by your bronchi that go into your lungs and in your lungs, also on your skin and in your stomach. So that's why you get those specific symptoms, the itchy ears, the itchy eyes, the itchy throat, the coughing, the phlegm, the runny nose, the sneezing, but also the nausea and the itchy skin. They're all related. So, when we give these herbs, they're calming down those cells, and those cells are less reactive when you inhale something or eat something that you're allergic to, and that really helps reduce the symptoms. Now, interestingly, there's a mushroom. It's originally found in the Himalayan mountains. It's known as Cordyceps sinensis. This can help. <laughs> Cordyceps is often used as a tonic for older people. It improves their good HDL cholesterol. It gives them energy. Uh, oddly, it helps them sleep better at night, which is not paradoxical because it does a lot of good things for older people. Cordyceps is known colloquially as Tibetan Viagra because it has that effect, but mildly on men who use, who need some help saluting the flag. So cordyceps is endangered in the wild. So we obtain our cordyceps from mushroom farmers. Now cordyceps influences asthma and lung inflammation. 
And that's important because allergies are a common trigger for asthmatic attacks. Before we go further, albeit many of the things I'm going to tell you about now are great for your allergies and your lung health and may reduce the number of asthma attacks you have, asthma is a very dangerous and it must be a very frightening disease. So always make sure you have rescue medication available. Rescue medication is something you inhale when you encounter an, an asthma attack. And, you know, <laughs> that keeps you out of the hospital, right? So always make sure you have new inhalers with a fresh uh, expiration date. Important to mention that. So airway inflammation, even in patients with asthma, are improved with this herb. Even severe asthma. The uh, human clinical trials show it improves breathing and lung function. It reduces inflammation in the uh, airways. It reduces the symptoms of allergies and asthma. Cordyceps does this by reducing inflammatory chemicals released by the immune system during an allergic reaction or during an asthmatic reaction. So it helps calm down the immune cells that would otherwise attack your respiratory tract. This, uh, this reduces the molecules that irritate your nose and your throat and your skin and your lungs. I'll give you some names because that's important. Uh, there's real research showing this. NF-kappa-B, interleukin-13, and the activation of the immune cells themselves during an allergic reaction or an asthmatic attack. Importantly, this is really good. Cordyceps raises the level of interleukin-10, Interleukin-10 is released by the immune system to calm things down. When you release interleukin-10, it reduces the inflammation that um, helps uh, control. This helps control the allergic reaction in the first place. The, this, this interleukin-10 calms down the inflammation during your allergy season. Uh, we're going to go to a quick break. When we come back, I will discuss other remedies for allergies and your respiratory tract. This podcast is brought to you by invitehealth.com. For over 20 years, Invite Health has provided premium quality supplements and expert advice you can trust. Now, first-time customers can enjoy an exclusive offer. Visit invitehealth.com slash podcast or click the link in this episode description. That's invitehealth.com slash podcast for your exclusive offer on Invite Health products. Invite Health offers the resources you need to make important decisions about your health. Chat live with degreed healthcare professionals, get product information, and find retail locations near you at invitehealth.com. You can also learn learn about our new genetic testing program and our exclusive Invite Fitness Wellness program. Follow Invite Health on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and be sure to subscribe to our podcast today. Now back to our episode. Welcome back, Jerry Hickey for Invite Health Podcast. Love doing this stuff, by the way. I'm really loving doing the podcast. It really lets me roll up my sleeves and dig deep down into uh, whatever subject I'm discussing. I love it. Uh, Black Seed. It's also called black cumin seed. Uh, the name in a botany textbook would be Nigella sativa. It grows in the Middle East. This is important to know. Natural things that grow are usually studied in the areas where they grow. So, for instance, um, echinacea would be studied more in the United States. Um, black cumin seed would be studied more in the Middle East. Um, the... Um, the mushroom we spoke about before, Cordyceps sinensis, before going to the break, that would be studied more in Asia because that's where these things grow. But but these studies now have drifted to Europe and the United States. They're studying these, these herbs all over the planet now because of their effect on lung health and allergies and asthma. So let's talk about uh, black cumin seed. Black cumin seed has been around for thousands of years as far as being used medicinally. We know this because it's mentioned in old... Um, Jewish texts, old Hebrew texts. It's mentioned in the Old Testament. It's mentioned in the uh, in the Quran. It's used for many different things in the Middle East. Uh, one of the things it's used for, by the way, is 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 improving the flavor of those flatbreads. <laughs> it's a nice spice in those flatbreads. So um, Humboldt University's over in um, in um, Berlin, Germany. And they worked with the Institute for Transfusion Medicine at Sharit University Hospital. Sharit University Hospital is possibly the oldest existing hospital on the planet. 
And uh, they reviewed studies on black seed. So they reviewed four human clinical trials, and it worked. Black seed, black human seed helped allergies in these four studies. It helped um, uh, bronchial asthma. It helped with atopic eczema, you know, the uh, skin reaction you get from allergies. It helped with allergic rhinitis. That's, you know, the breathing symptoms, the, uh, the nasal congestion, et cetera, you get from allergies. Uh, these were all capsules in these studies, and it really it really improved all, all their symptoms. Um, it helped with their runny nose, their sneezing, their itchy eyes, their itchy throat, their coughing. It helped with phlegm production. It really had an impact. But here's another one. This is a specific study uh, in the Journal of the American Journal of Otolaryngology. That's ear, nose, and throat uh, medicine. And it's a study of patients with allergies. And when they gave them black seed, yeah, it helped all the symptoms. It reduced congestion. They could breathe easier. It stopped their runny nose. It was breaking up mucus. Um, it was itchy nose, itchy eyes, sneezing. All of these things were improving, but breathing was improving. And this happened within the first two weeks of use. It really had an impact. It really was a strong but safe impact. The interesting thing is, when you look at the studies of the first two herbs I discussed, Cordyceps sinensis and uh, Nigella sativa, which is black human seed, they're both as safe as the placebo in all these studies. Placebo is a fake pill. So, I mean, how do you, how do you be as, as therapeutic as these herbs, but yet as safe as placebo? So here's the journal of phytotherapy research. It's from University College in London. Same thing. When they gave people with allergies the black cumin seed, it helped with the allergy uh, symptoms. But they also gave it to people with asthma. It was a double-blind, placebo-controlled, randomized human clinical trial. That's a gold standard, state-of-the-art human clinical trial. And it improved the scores in the asthma. I mean, it absolutely was improving the wheezing, the breathing, the coughing. But beyond that, when they checked their blood, um, they found that all the chemicals released by the immune system that trigger asthma were dropping because of the black seed and these people could breathe better like you know when you breathe into that um that little uh, machine the um uh to see your expiratory volume in other words you exhale you inhale as strongly as you can and then you exhale again into this little machine and you kind of like lift up a little little ball that actually improved so the black seed has a strong effect it has a strong effect. I'll tell you something else. This is the uh, journal Me- Me- Medicinal Principles and Practice. These are people being treated for allergies to pollens, different pollens. Now, let's talk about that. If your allergy is in the springtime, the early spring, it's usually tree pollen, like a birch tree or a poplar. If your allergies are in the summer, that's usually to grass pollens and flowers. And if your allergies are in the fall, well, that's usually the weeds. They call it ragweed, but it's all the weeds. All the weeds are pollinating in the fall. So, you know, your allergies, uh, that gives you some guidance what you're allergic to. So when people with allergies, they were giving the uh, giving them the uh, immunotherapy, the allergy shots to reduce the, uh, the level of their allergic reaction, their allergenicity. Half of the people, they added black seed, the other half they gave placebo. Black seed improved the effectiveness of the immunotherapy injections at the allergist. So there's a lot of functions with, with black seed with people with allergies. And I have a number of studies where black seed helps calm down the lung inflammation and the reactivity of people with asthma. It really helps to, to decrease the reactivity of, of asthma. Okay, let's... Um, Let's just go to another quick break. This podcast is brought to you by invitehealth.com. For over 20 years, Invite Health has provided premium quality supplements and expert advice you can trust. Now, first-time customers can enjoy an exclusive offer. Visit invitehealth.com slash podcast or click the link in this episode description. That's invitehealth.com slash podcast for your exclusive offer on Invite Health products. Invite Health offers the resources you need to make important decisions about your health. 
Chat live with degreed healthcare professionals, get product information, and find retail locations near you at invitehealth.com. You can also learn about our new genetic testing program and our exclusive Invite Fitness Wellness Program. Follow Invite Health on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and be sure to subscribe to our podcast today. Now back to our episode. Okay, welcome back. Uh, Jerry Hickey for the Invite Health Podcast. We're discussing uh, natural remedies that help allergies. Later on in the podcast, we'll discuss some other things that will help clear up your allergies or keep you safer during your allergy season. But now let's talk about a really amazing supplement called NAC, N-acetylcysteine. I mean, I would really call NAC a miracle nutrient. It affects every cell in your body in a really good way. I mean, it improves circulation to your heart. It helps calm down your brain. It does so many different wonderful things. And it's all I, I, clinically proven. There's thousands and thousands of human clinical trials using NAC. One of the reasons why there's so many trials for NAC is, well, it's used as an antidote for a lot of poisons in poison control centers. And it's also used to break up mucus in people who have trouble breathing, like people with cystic fibrosis. In cystic fibrosis, you inherit genes from your parents that make your mucus real thick, which can prevent you from breathing. NAC is used as an inhaler in these people to uh, break up the mucus bonds. They can breathe easier. Now, the other thing is NAC is used um, in hospitals, they give it to people to inhale before they have a diagnostic test if they're using something that's radioactive, some radioactive isotope. Here's why. When you, when you go to a hospital for a diagnostic test, they need a contrast agent to show up whatever they're studying, whether it's your kidneys or your heart or your brain. So they either inject you with uh, something that's radioactive as an isotope or, a, uh, or you drink it like radioactive barium, and this shows up the organ better. Like if you have a nuclear stress test, they give you one of these things to show up your heart and the blood vessels in the heart and the function of the heart, et cetera. It's easier for the doctors to see it. The problem is that these radioactive isotopes are released through your kidneys over the following seven days. So it can cause kidney damage. So if you already have pre-existing kidney damage, it can even drive you into kidney failure. This is true. They give you NAC as an inhaler before the diagnostic test, but that's not really long enough because you're getting you're excreting through the urine the radioactive isotope for the next seven days. So I tell people going for these tests, start taking NAC. You can get it in a capsule at 600 milligrams. Always take it with food. Take one capsule three times a day with food starting two days before the test, the day of the test, and for seven days after. And by then, all that radioactivity is cleared out of you. It's also the antidote to acetaminophen, you know, Tylenol, and other drugs that are poisonous to the liver. So there's thousands of human clinical trials using NAC. It's a very safe supplement. It's an amazing supplement. And like I said, I'd call it a miracle nutrient. It melts away allergic reactions. First of all, with allergies, it breaks up mucus. There's usually mucus when you inhale an allergen. It also shields the lungs. It creates the mother of all antioxidants called glutathione peroxidase. Glutathione is a powerful protector in your eyeballs, in your kidneys, in your liver, in your muscles, in your heart, in your brain, but also in your lungs, in your immune cells, in your red blood cells, and in your lung. So NAC converts to glutathione. You can't swallow glutathione. You'd have to take massive amounts just to get a little bit into the body. It's a large molecule that's broken down by your digestive tract. So NAC uh, is converted to glutathione. What is NAC in the first place? There's an amino acid called cysteine, C-Y-S-T-E-I-N-E. Cysteine is amazing for the human body. The problem is it's unstable. It's easily oxidized, and then it won't help you. So they found out if they add an acetyl group, which is basically a carbon with some hydrogen molecules, uh, if they attach that to the ammonia group, am I giving too much info here? In the cysteine, it becomes NAC, N-acetylcysteine, and then it's stable and it works, and it really works amazingly well. So NAC breaks up the mucus molecule. NAC shields your lungs by creating glutathione in your lungs. That helps protect your lungs from pollens and dusts and pollution. NAC stimulates phase 2 detoxification throughout the human body. Phase 2 detoxification helps break down and remove allergens. But NAC breaks down the allergic response. And this is interesting. The black seed 
formula, the black seed, the black cumin seed, helps prevent the allergy in the first place. But anything that gets past the black seed, NAC will mop up like a sponge. So it's kind of like before and after. So when I use a formula with black seed for allergies and I give them NAC, people do amazingly well. And they're not getting the uh, side effects of the antihistamines. I'll go over a couple of studies on NAC that has to do with the lungs or allergies. So here's a study in a clinical drug investigation, and it's 123 patients uh, with obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. That could be emphysema, that could be severe asthma, bronchiectasis, bronchitis, anything that damages the lungs and leads to these bre uh, breathing problems. So on 123 patients with uh, COPD, they gave them NAC, and it strongly improved their lung health. It strongly prevent, prevented exacerbations of the COPD that would wind them up in the hospital. That's really important. And there's a lot of studies like that. Um, here's the uh, Department of Respiratory Medicine, University Hospital, Leuven. Adding NAC to drugs like corticosteroids and people with lung disease further prevents a buildup of scar tissue in their lungs. Well, I like that. I like that. Here's a NAC on breathing in people with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. It's from researchers in, a, in Israel. It's in the journal Chest. Same thing. I mean, in patients with moderate to severe lung disease, giving them NAC, 600 milligrams twice a day with meals for six weeks, Strongly improved their ability to breathe, strongly reduced wheezing, improved lung function. It got better and better every day. But the thing is, the, the effect doesn't last. If you stop the uh, NAC, the problems come back. Because you didn't get rid of disease, you just reduced inflammation in the airways. I mean, these people were even getting, get, getting back to exercising. That's how well it was improving their uh, their breathing, their endurance, reducing the, the, uh, the, the effects of their lung disease. Chronic bronchitis. Here's another study. It's from the European Respiratory uh, Journal. It's the University of Rome and other uh, academic research institutions throughout Europe, like in, uh, in King's College, London. And uh, they gave NAC to people with chronic bronchitis. And they found out it improved their lung disease. So then they analyzed 13 human clinical trials that included 4,200 patients with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, like chronic bronchitis. Same deal. NAC was preventing the kind of attacks that would wind you up in the uh, emergency room. It was keeping people out of the emergency room. Uh, it's, it's, it's really worth taking. It's really worth taking. It really helps uh, prevent... Uh, Damage to the lungs. It really helps you breathe better. I give it to a lot of my clients. So uh, just a quick review. Uh, some of the herbs and nutrients I find helpful with people with allergies or asthma. Uh, rosemary. Uh, black cumin seed. Cordyceps sinensis mushroom. Uh, NAC, a nutrient NAC. Now, are there some herbs you should avoid if you have allergies yeah 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 there are if you're allergic to daisies or sunflowers or anything in the aster family uh, you really should uh, avoid echinacea echinacea is related to uh, sunflowers and to daisies but beyond triggering an allergic reaction it can make it worse because it stimulates the immune system now, it also helps to drink a lot of water. Why would water help? Well, water's a solvent. Just look at the effects of the Colorado River digging out the Grand Canyon down in the southwest. So drinking enough water uh, moves pollens and toxins and allergens, things that trigger an allergic reaction out of your system. So drinking a lot of water, especially during your allergy season. Now, it'll also help you to breathe easier if you know to concept of cross-reactivity. But before we go there, let's take a quick break. Jerry Hickey and Health. I'll be right back.
This podcast is brought to you by invitehealth.com. For over 20 years, Invite Health has provided premium quality supplements and expert advice you can trust. Now, first-time customers can enjoy an exclusive offer. Visit invitehealth.com slash podcast or click the link in this episode description. That's invitehealth.com slash podcast for your exclusive offer on Invite Health products. Invite Health offers the resources you need to make important decisions about your health. Chat live with degreed healthcare professionals, get product information, and find retail locations near you at invitehealth.com. You can also learn about our new genetic testing program and our exclusive Invite Fitness Wellness program. Follow Invite Health on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and be sure to subscribe to our podcast today. Now back to our episode. Okay, welcome back. When you are allergic to something, you're actually reacting to the uh, proteins and what you're allergic to. Your immune system is reacting. So there's something called cross-reactivity in allergic reactions. This occurs when the proteins in one substance that you're allergic to, typically a pollen, are similar to uh, to the proteins found in another substance, typically a food. The cross-reactivity between pollens and foods is called oral allergy syndrome or pollen food syndrome. It could be annoying. It's not usually dangerous, but sometimes it is. Now, it's especially problematic during your allergy season. So, um, people suffering from pollen allergies can develop symptoms around in their mouth and their throat immediately after eating raw fresh fruits or vegetables or nuts or seeds that contain proteins that cross-react with the pollens you're allergic to. An important example are people with an allergy to birch tree pollen. They can experience the same symptoms after eating an apple, peaches, pitted fruits, carrots, peanuts, hazelnuts. Um, Likewise, ragweed allergic individuals experience symptoms uh, when they eat melons. Now, symptoms can include um, itching or tingling of your lips or your tongue and the roof of your mouth or throat. In addition, there may be hives around the mouth area where the food came into contact with the skin or swelling of your lips or tongue and throat tightness. That's kind of scary. Rarely, uh, an oral allergy syndrome, the reaction could be severe. It could be uh, systemic. You know, in other words, uh, also affecting like your eyes and your stomach and your skin, etc. Or very rarely, it could cause anaphylaxis. Now, what's that? That's dangerous. Anaphylaxis is a severe allergic reaction as a huge reaction by your immune system, and all, all your immune cells are releasing chemicals all at once, and this effa- actually affects your lungs and breathing. Now, if you cook the foods, you usually tolerate them well. So if you have cross-allergenicity between melon and ragweed, uh, well, you're not really cooking melon, but if you cook foods, uh, like if you cook down an apple, during your tree pollen season, you normally don't react to the apple. So if you make the apple into a baked apple or applesauce, what you're doing is denaturing the proteins. Your your immune system shouldn't react to that. In a future podcast, I'd like to discuss probiotics and allergies. This is really important. Because if you do the correct probiotics, they actually seem to correct allergies. I've pretty much gotten rid of my wheat allergy. Now, this is important. There's different levels of reactions to wheat. One of them is an autoimmune reaction called gluten enteropathy, also called celiac sprue. I didn't have that. What I had was a wheat allergy. And by taking a probiotic, unbeknownst to me, the strains I was taking actually got rid of my wheat allergy. I can eat bread now and not react to it or have such a minor reaction it doesn't really mean anything. So we'll discuss probiotics and allergies in a a future podcast. So thank you for tuning in to the Invite Health Podcast. You can find all of our episodes for free wherever you listen to podcasts or by visiting invitehealth.com forward slash podcasts. Make sure you subscribe and please leave us a review. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Invite Health Today. We'll see you next time on another episode of the Invite Health Podcast. Mm